Hey, what's up? Michael Punch here with another exciting... Ah, uh, no, wrong music. This is what it looks like when we let Runway ML generate the animation. It's always a surprise what you'll get. That's why we're not yet at a point where we can tell AI how something should be animated. And although there are very interesting AI concepts coming up, we still need tools like After Effects to art direct the motion we have in mind. In this After Effects tutorial and part two of my tutorial series, we're gonna create a cinematic title background animation. It's based on this image from my previous video where I showed you how to prompt this in Midjourney. And to give you a little sneak peek for the next tutorial, part three, we're gonna use this animation to bring it into 3D space. To animate this Midjourney image, we need to preserve the topography of the underlying texture that the lines follow. In the previous video, we tried it with very region in Midjourney, but with mediocre results. And that's why we're here in Photoshop to make it better. We could accomplish this in After Effects, but working with high resolution images is better in Photoshop, especially when it comes to retouching. Go to Image, Adjustments and select Black and White that not only opens the according dialog box, but also desaturates the image from the get-go. By the way, in After Effects there is also a black and white color correction effect that works one-to-one -one, just like in Photoshop. Now reduce the values for the yellows and reds, which let most of the lines disappear. Because there are some lines left in the center, we have to remove them manually. And we can do this easily by erasing the lines with a remove tool. Start with a rather small tool size and remove one line after the other. I know, it can take a while, but it's worth it, because this way you preserve the original structure of the background. Later, you can iron it out with a bigger brush size. You can recheck and compare it with the original. And if you see you've taken away too much detail, you can select the History Brush tool and add some detail back. And after that, use the Remove tool again to get rid of the unnecessary details. Now we have a mountainous looking background. And therefore, I declare this as our final background. Now, let's open After Effects and import the original Midjourney image along with the final background. Let's put them into composition by dragging both images onto the new composition icon. Make sure that it's a single composition and the sequence layers box is unchecked. Set the still duration to 150 frames and name the composition Main Composition. Also, the image should be above the empty background. Before we move on, let us improve the background a bit. You know, attention to the detail. Turn the original image off, duplicate the background layer and apply a displacement effect to it. Then create a new solid and add a turbulent noise effect. Set fractal type to terrain and reduce contrast to 36. Put the solid layer to the very bottom. On the duplicated background layer, draw a mask around the center and feather it a bit. Then set displacement map layer to the solid layer, but also set it from source to effects and masks to include the turbulent noise effect. And you can already notice a slight shift. Now decrease horizontal displacement to negative 20 and vertical displacement to 20. This creates a more rugged landscape at this spot. Apply an emboss effect to it, increase the contrast to 150 and set blending mode to hard light. Adjust the mask if necessary. And now we have added some nice little highlights to it. I want some rocks and stones back here. You can make the highlight and the shadow. Precompose these three layers and name it background. And now let's finally take care of how to animate the electric lines. The obvious method to animate a reveal would be to use an iris wipe transition. But instead of the iris wipe effect, I prefer the circle effect with the blending mode set to stencil alpha and the feathered edge set to 300. We can animate the radius from frame 0 to frame 120 and play it back. Well, the reveal looks cheesy and too obvious. Don't worry. 
We didn't do this in vain, because the underlying technique remains. We just need it to be more elaborate and less obvious. We have to use some tricks. And like any magician, we need to distract the viewer from that quote-unquote cheap wipe trick. And the basic strategy would be to let the delicate electric lines lead the animation, followed shortly by discreetly revealing the original image. This means we need a luminance mask of the lines but without the glow. But as you can see, it's quite difficult to reduce the glow while isolating the fine detailed lines. In this case, with the black and white effect we've already used in Photoshop. But I found a good method to reduce the glow over in Adobe Lightroom. It's because it has a useful dehaze lighter which we can set to the maximum of 100. Then crank down the highlights, put up the contrast, reduce shadows and white, increase the blacks a bit and finally increase clarity and texture to get the electric lines more or less separated from the background, which is especially challenging in the center where it's hard to distinguish the lines from the overexposed glow. But Lightroom did a good job here. At least we now have an image that is just good enough to improve the rest in Photoshop. To treat the center separately, duplicate the layer and go to Image, Adjustments to open the black and white dialog box. Because the lines have rather red and yellow color components, decrease the remaining colors to minus 200. Reduce the red channel value to diminish the glow while preserving the finer details. For the lines outside the center, open the black and white dialog box for the layer below. Again, set all the colors we don't need to minus 200. Crank out the yellow slider to 200, but also reduce the red channel to minus 200. This way, we get the main electric lines in full contrast. But to restore the fine details in the center, apply a layer mask to the top layer, fill it black, and use a white and soft brush to paint into the mask layer around the electric line's origin. Rest assured, this is entirely suitable for use as a luminance mask. But as a perfectionist, you may find yourself inclined to meticulously remove every blemish and clean up the lines. And it depends on the extent of your pursuit of perfection, how far you want to go. But be cautious, the closer you strive for perfection, the more challenging it becomes to distinguish between essential lines and unnecessary spots. Last check if the luma mat covers the important lines. Perfect. And now let's leave Photoshop behind for good and finally animate in After Effects. Import the luma mat and insert it into the main comp. Then switch off the circle effect from the original image so we can also recheck here if the luminance mask matches with the electric lines. What we are gonna do next is to trace the lines with paths in a separate shape layer. In this case with a stroke width of 11 pixels. We're gonna use them later to reveal the luminance mask. But relax, you don't need to trace every single line, just the most important ones. Just enough to cover most of the clearest lines. Let's say the brightest spot is the origin of the lines. Start to trace the longest and most prominent lines. They don't need to match the original lines perfectly, but the thickness of the stroke should cover the lines you trace. Every now and then you can recheck with the original. Then trace some lines in between but evenly spaced to each other. And eventually it should look like this. Because every time you draw a new path, a new shape group with its own fill and stroke operator was created, which is not efficient. But you can delete the fill operators, we don't need them anyway, consolidate the paths into one shape group and delete the remaining groups. And all the paths can rely on the one and only stroke operator left. Then we can add a trim paths operator which we can later use to let the lines grow. But first, apply a curves effect to the luma mat and increase the contrast to make the lines even more prominent. Then use it as a track mat for the mid-journey image, but make sure you switch to luma mat. And now we have the electric lines isolated. Then pre-compose both layers and name it electric lines. Next, set the track mat to the shape layer with our traced paths and animate the trim paths operator, setting the end attribute to 0% at the first frame and 100% at frame 120. 
To make the lines more tender at the beginning, you can taper the stroke by increasing both the start length and the end length. However, it's evident that the stroke lengths impact the taper. Yet, my goal is to maintain a consistent fixed size taper. To do this, set length unit from percent to pixels and increase start length and end length to around 70. Now we have the main lines growing beautifully from the center. What about the secondary lines? Duplicate the electric lines pre-comp layer and set track mat to no mat. Then create a new solid, go into the electric lines pre-comp and copy the animated circle effect that we switched off before. Back in the main comp, paste the circle effect into the black solid at frame 0, set the track mat of the layer below to the black solid so that we get a reveal of the secondary lines. But as planned in the beginning, we want the main lines grow first before the secondary lines appear, so shift these two layers by 5 frames. The reveal looks better compared to the simple wipe from before, but the wipe is still too obvious. We can make it better. Turn on the black solid and set the circle effects blending mode from stencil alpha to non to make it visible. Then add a turbulent displace effect to it, increase the amount and decrease the size to make the circle look irregular. Next apply a roughen edges effect, increase the border, decrease the scale and increase the edge sharpness. Just play around with the parameters of both effects until you feel that the secondary lines perfectly complement the main lines, resulting in an organic growth. And I think it looks good here. And to restore the original look, insert the mid-journey image above the background, duplicate the solid layer with the organic circle wipe and set it as a track mat for the mid-journey image. Then shift these two layers by another 5 frames. Okay, looks like the cheesy wipe again. Therefore, delete the rough and edges effect and adjust the parameters of the turbulent displays and the feather value of the circle effect. Now it doesn't look so much like a wipe anymore, but we've pretended adding a beautiful glow to the growing lines. And that's basically it. We could stop here and be satisfied with it. But still, something is missing. Let's go the extra mile and make it more cinematic. First, apply a curves effect to the background and increase the contrast. This makes the lines more prominent. Same goes for the original mid-journey image to make it better blend with the lines and the background. Then duplicate the two layers responsible for the growing main lines and animate the start attribute in the trim paths operator from 0 to 100%. Exactly at the keyframes from the end attribute below. Then shift the new keyframes by 4 frames. And now we have these little tiny motion trails running along the paths. Increase the thickness to around 40. Precompose the two layers and name it Electric Tips. At this point you can apply a glow effect to it. If you have the Deep Glow or the Optical Glow plugin, then lucky you, because they will produce really nice physically based glows. But in my case, I'll use my Super Glow preset that mimics the paid glow plugins with native effects. I made a tutorial about it, but you can also have this little preset for a tiny support. However, a simple glow effect should normally work, so I'm gonna adjust the parameters to make them less strong. And this is what they look like, making the viewer even more distracted from the wipe. Next, apply a turbulent displace effect to the secondary lines and animate the evolution for 3 to 4 cycles up until the last frame of the composition. But we don't want it wobbly like here, so decrease the size to like 8 for finer distortions. Because we hardly see anything, increase the amount to 150. Now the image not only looks less static, we also gave it some subtle electric flash-like motion. What we can do now to add more motion to it is to go into the electric tips composition, duplicate the layers a couple of times and stagger them by 20 frames, but with a thinner stroke width than the first one. And look at this. This way we created some electric impulses. Could be more, but let's leave it like that. And that's it guys. I hope you liked this tutorial. If so, 
I invite you to my next tutorial part 3 where I'm gonna show you different concepts on how to make 2D animation look 3D. See you next time.